All right, so we're going to talk about the different ways identities can be used to get access, to grant access to various Azure resources. And the goal here is to identify the right identity, type of identity, and the right permissions, um, the right grants that should be done for various use cases. Okay, so the three different kinds of access we're going to talk about are shared secrets, managed identities, and uh, Azure credentials, AD roles, basically, AD credentials that are provided. And in some cases, AD might be used under the hood, but that's really, we're talking about being really explicit about it. So these are the three, shared access secret, managed identity, and I'm going to give use and credentials, and I'm going to give use cases for where uh, the different ones might be better than others. Um, and I, so inside, so let's talk about shared access secret. This is probably the most primitive of all these. And basically, it's kind of like a client cert. It's basically a signing key. When requests are made, the request is signed with the shared access secret. If you have the secret, you can take the action. So here, I set it up so that I had ADO pipeline builds and the ADO builds. Uh, we're going to manage and create and destroy event hubs on this namespace. And so the shared access secret in this case uh, would get buried in the pipeline. The cool thing about shared access secrets, why are they cool? Super simple. I give you a, a key and when you present it, you're good. Um, and then, well, or when you sign with it. Uh, the downside is it's just like a cert. You might have to revoke it and they expire. So think of it as a client cert. Um, and anybody, though, that has this, like you might embed it in an IoT device, but that might be bad because then if anybody reverse engineers it, they now have access to the secret. Um, but IoT comes with its own. So shared access secret, super straightforward. You can set it up on, and I actually have a repo that'll be here uh, that actually sets these up. It shares up uh, shared access secret. And so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the next one really applies to Azure resources. And I really like these. These are managed identities. I've got two exa three examples here. One's a system managed identity, one's a user, and one I didn't say. And basically an identity is an identity that can be added to an Azure resource. So when that resource makes a call to another Azure resource, you know what the identity of that is. So if I had a set of apps, like in this case, if I had an ADF pipeline and a Kubernetes app, I might give them both the same managed identity. In this case, it wouldn't be system, it would be user. Uh, but I could give them both that identity. <clears throat> and the beauty of this identity thing is uh, no credentials need to be managed by the program itself really, and no username and password needs to be shared. So you can deploy assets into Azure and use a managed identity, and you just assign it when it's a provisioned, and then that thing gets the identity, and you don't have to worry about um, you know, any leaking any credentials outside, and it won't work for any non-Azure component. So managed identities, in a lot of ways, if you're doing Azure component to Azure component, um, that would be the thing to use, ma uh, managed identities. And in my case, I like user managed identities for some things, the system managed identities for an individual component. So for ADF, that might make sense. But if I do a user managed identity and I had like five or six different Kubernetes apps, I could give them all the same identity um, if I wanted to just, or like a fragment of an identity. And that way they could all publish to the same um, event hub maybe. Right. And so this man, I did another talk somewhere on this identity thing. Oh, it was ephemeral encryption for disk drives. So man managed identities are a way for an Azure resource to be identify itself to another Azure resource. And it works inside of Azure and no credentials need to be managed to my mind. Whereas like shared access secret, man, you got to control who has access to the secret. Okay. The third one is kind of the common one, especially if you were on-prem, this will be the legacy version. And, and I don't mean that bad completely, right? Because there's like human credentials and then there's like application credentials, like system accounts. In a lot of cases, system accounts should be replaced by managed identities. Um, so, but if you want user credentials, is a user allowed to publish? And in this case, a user's application is gonna publish an event and it's being done on behalf of that user by the proxy or by an app tier or something. Um, then what would happen is you would create a user RBAC and you would assign a user role uh, to that user. And then when their requests came in, when they authenticated to the connection endpoint, in this case to publish a message, it would be it would look it up and see if they had read permission, if that role had a reader, or in this case, write publish permission, send on this hub, and it would allow it. And in this case, though, this is like username and password, 
OAuth token. There's a whole bunch of credential management to be here. Um, in some ways, this is the most complicated. It's also the most flexible for users or for sets of um, applications. You might use this for IoT. Um, I called it out here for Databricks. I, I like Databricks a lot. I don't mean it like <clears throat> that Databricks can't use other things like uh, managed identities. Um, but in the case of Databricks, if I'm running multiple users, uh, like multi-tenant, right? So if a system is multi-tenant, we're going to probably want the credentials of not the system itself, but the user uh, that ran the command. So managed identity won't work there, right? Because for we don't want to run get, publish messages with the rights of the Azure Databricks instance. In this case, we want to publish with the rights on behalf of the user. And so we would need the user credentials to make that happen. So uh, that's really it. Um, the question is, uh, do you want something simple, shared access secret, and it's internal, you can manage it, or may, you might use this with third parties. I'm giving the third party a secret. It's their problem to manage it. They'll be able to publish with it. Um, the other one is for Azure resources, which are managed identities. We talked a bunch about that. No credentials to manage. It just Your identity is just assigned to the Azure resource, and when it connects, it presents those that identity, and the system trusts system identities. And the last one is when you're doing on behalf of or you want user. In the past, this would have been system account for on-prem calling into the cloud. Um, I work a place where we're going to use system credentials, uh, system accounts for everything. Um, but really, we should use move to manage identities. But when we're doing cross, cross cloud or on behalf of, we need the user's credentials. So um, and those configs are all available uh, like on, you know, like the event hubs namespace. I actually have an example, which I'll put in the links, which um, provisions a namespace to use shared access secret, and it provisions publishing and receiving with managed identities. So I hope that's useful for you. Well, and have a great day.